Hi everyone, it's Lisa and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Those of you that reserved your stamp apparatus in the first round are probably just getting it right about now. And I thought this is the perfect time to walk you through some do's and don'ts with your stamp apparatus. It's gonna come in a box and it's got a little bubble wrap here. It's a little envelope, so I save that just for storage. There's also a black and white brochure with pictures and outlines of how to use it. But I'm gonna go over some things with you. You're gonna find right away that the two hinged clear plates are not attached. That's gonna be really important that you remember that you do not wanna store those with those on there. One of them will lay flat, but the other one will not. And they are plastic, so you don't wanna risk breaking them. Also, your Stamparatus is going to come with a foam mat. You're going to need this when you're stamping with photopolymer. If you're stamping with regular clear mount stamps, you won't need it. For a point of reference, this would be photopolymer. That's when you're going to need the foam mat. And this would be clear mount, which means there are cling stamps with red rubber. That you don't need the foam mount. I'm gonna be demonstrating using the fabulous Flamingo stamp set. And I'm gonna be able to use all of the hinge platforms to give you an idea of how to use it with multiple images for layering. Since it's photopolymer, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add my foam mat to the bottom. And I was concerned, maybe just like you were, that this was gonna be hard to put together. But I'm gonna tell you what, it's super easy and I don't consider myself at all technically inclined. So these just slide right inside the grooves here at the top. Simply just go in and because of the angle of the camera, I'm not gonna be able to fit the whole thing. So I'm gonna just push that off to the side there's another one here that's going to go here on the side. Now, does it matter if this is on the right or the left? No. It, it, whatever's more comfortable for you is where you're going to place it. Now, typically, you would place your stamps on a clear block, but that's not what you're going to use when you're using the stamp apparatus. That's what these plates will work as. They'll work in place of the acrylic clear blocks. I'm going to flip this over really quick, and I'm going to show you that on the back, there are two compartments here for the magnets. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you can see how I'm struggling. They are very, very strong. They're made of a natural component. So you don't wanna get these anywhere near one another, otherwise they will snap. You'll see too that I added a washi tape strip to the center of my magnet to help break down that center contact should they come into contact with one another. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those out of their storage space. You're going to use those to actually hold your paper in place. So I've got a quarter sheet here of Whisper White cardstock, and I'm going to place that here in the corner. I'm going to put one of my magnets at the bottom. I'm going to use one at the top, again, keeping them far away from each other. Not only can they break if they come into contact, you can get your finger pinched in there. I'm starting with my most solid image, which is the full body of the flamingo. What you'll do is you'll hold it on the cardstock, uninked, on where you're going to want it. And then all you're going to do is you're going to close the hinge and press and then it's going to lift up the image for you. I've got the classic ink pad, but if you have the Stampin' Spots, these are even better. It takes the exact same ink and you can refill them. They're also great for traveling, but you're gonna see that inking it this way is a lot easier because it's smaller than inking this one. So I'm gonna show you both ways. Here's the full size Stampin' Up! Classic ink pad, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ink this up. So I wanna try to keep the ink off the platform here if I can. But if you do, don't worry about it. You can just wipe it right off. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink that up. And I'm going to place it down on my cardstock and I'm going to press. Now here's the beauty. If in fact you happen to lift this and you're like, oh, that doesn't look really good right there. It's not real solid. All you have to do is put it right back down and press again. It's perfectly aligned, allowing you to reposition it. Perfect if you make a mistake. The next image is the solid body piece that would go over this. Now, keep in mind, if you're using two different color inks, then you can switch ink pads, but I'm not because I want to teach you another technique. I'm going to place the stamp exactly where I want it. And once I'm happy with its positioning, I'm going to use now this hinge side, and I'm going to close it, and I'm going to press to pick up the image. 
this time I'm going to use the Stampin' Spot so you can see how that works. So I'm actually going to hold it on the edges and I'm going to ink it up. Now you're going to notice too that it's going to be the same color as this, but we want it a little bit lighter because we're doing what's called two-step stamping, which means there are two like images that are meant for overlapping. So I'm going to stick that right on top of there. Rather than putting a piece of paper here, which you can do, I'm actually just going to add an index card or a scrap piece of paper here to rub. And then I'm going to close my hinge, which is perfectly aligned, and I'm going to press. And then I'm going to lift. And you're going to see now how I have a lighter shade and a darker shade for the actual definition of the stamp. But you know what? There's still more pieces. So here's the best part. We're going to pick this piece up and we're going to flip it around. Because if we're going to do multiple cards, we don't have to unmount anything. The next piece is going to be the outline definition of the flamingo. So again, I'm going to position this right over the top on where I want it, just looking to see if I have it aligned. And remember, the image now is on the back side because we flipped this around. So I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to press to pick up this image. I'm going to use my Memento ink, which is my black ink of choice for photopolymer, and I'm going to ink that up. You're going to see it up here. Again, it's going to look backwards because remember, it's a window and it's got a hinge. So I'm going to close that up. I'm going to bring this straight down and I am going to press. Same thing when we did the full image, that if in fact it's not lined up perfectly, you see how I've missed here a little bit? I can actually press again and then just take a look. Now it looks to me that maybe I don't have enough ink there. So you know what I can do is I can go back in, I can re-ink it a little bit more, and I can go back over the top. This is going to make creating multiple images so much easier. I'm going to lift and I'm going to flip this around again because, believe it or not, there is one more outline image and it's for those thin legs. Again, I'm going to line this up. I'm going to close the hinge. I'm going to press to pick up my stamp. I'm going to open up the hinge and this time I'm actually going to ink up the legs on this side. So I've got four different stamp images all going at the same time. Just, just an amazing feature of the Stamparatus. And again, I'm going to line it up and I'm going to press. And there we've got a perfect alignment of the legs. When you go to remove these, make sure you keep the magnets far away from each other and then just slip your paper out. I've got a couple other here. Here's one. You can see that this one's a little bit lighter than this one. I think I need to re-ink that Stampin' Spot. And by the way, if you subscribe to Paper Pumpkin, you're going to get a new color every month that's part of the Paper Pumpkin kit. It's included with that price along with the free stamp set and the pre-cut supplies. Great plug for Paper Pumpkin and a fun kit every single month. And then I did one more here and this is in the Berry Burst. And I even used the greeting to get that perfect alignment. No more crooked greetings and no more crooked images. Just be careful when you align them on your paper so they'll be perfectly aligned when you use your Stamparatus. Stampin' Up! has announced that there will be replacement magnets in the brand new annual catalog that will come out on June 1st of 2018. So if for some reason they should happen to get connected and they break, you'll be able to replace them at that time. Let's talk about how you would clean this. You can literally peel these off and clean them on your stamp and scrub. If you get ink on the clear mats, you're going to want to use absolutely no solvent. So no stamp and mist. I like just a simple baby wipe or a damp paper towel and then just clean it off. You're going to see the grid is on here too, which is going to make it easy for you to align things if you want them perfectly straight. I prefer not to use a baby wipe on my stamps. There's a little bit of a moisturizer in there that can leave a little bit of a residue on the stamp itself. And I certainly don't like the paper towel because that'll leave the fiber flex in the photopolymer. So what I tend to do is I grab a clear block and I just kind of tap it on there and I go ahead and I clean this on my stamp and scrub. And this one block will do them all. It's just a matter of preference on how you like to clean your stamps. If you didn't order your stamp apparatus during the reservation period, it will be available in the brand new annual catalog debuting on June 1st. And it will retail for $49. I really hope that today's demonstration has helped you with a couple quick tips. I'm so glad that you joined me today, everyone. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. 